I've not seen such bravery. This is the second half of a two-part list. If you haven't seen the first part, click over there to see numbers 10 through 6. Alright Matt, are you ready to count down our top 5 edutainment games? No, I'm still thinking about a Mr. Rogers game. You could have Lolly the Trolley doing a Donkey Kong style minecart level to get to the neighborhood of make-believe. And it could be Kinect enabled. <laughs> Lean over to tie your shoe. Yeah, well you keep thinking about that one and I'm gonna move the video along. Through the magic of editing. The Reader Rabbit series from The Learning Company was a line of games for kids from infancy through second grade. Although the main character's name is Reader Rabbit, the games taught much more than just reading. They tried to call him Math Rabbit in the second game, but apparently that didn't really stick around. The original games were released in 1986, and it's pretty interesting to see how the series evolved. What started as a dark and quiet collection of minigames transformed into a series of reading adventures filled with songs, animation, and storylines. Well, calling them storylines is a little generous. I mean, in one game they're on a quest to find imagination, and throughout the game they tell you to use your imagination, so what's the point of going to find it if you're already using it? It's Imaginception! Regardless, Reader Rabbit was a fun way to be exposed to phonics. It was jam-packed with simple yet entertaining minigames to help beef up on your reading and spelling skills. The Learning Company released over 40 Reader Rabbit titles, not including the recent ports on consoles like the Wii or DS. With such a large library and an apparent attempt to keep the games accessible, it's easy to see the Reader Rabbit series remaining a favorite in the edutainment space. Matt, I don't think you understand just how excited I am to talk about these games. I remember the Junior Adventure series from Humongous Entertainment fondly, and still occasionally play them. Still trying to master those age 3 through 8 skills, huh? It's like what they say about basketball, man, you gotta nail the basics. The four big players in the Junior Adventure series were Putt-Putt, Freddy Fish, Pajama Sam, and Spy Fox, but I personally liked Fatty Bear because, well, listen to it, Fatty Bear. Unlike the previous games on the list, the Junior Adventure series didn't focus on a specific subject like math or spelling. While educational elements like that are in the game, they're not necessarily the main goal. As the title implies, these were adventure games. They featured innocent storylines, and as you saved the zoo, conquered your fear of darkness, and saved the dairy world from evil goats, you were presented with a series of obstacles. Most of the games boiled down to basic problem solving. How do you save the lion cub from the treacherous waterfall? Well, first you have to find a rope. The game weren't always the same when you replayed them either. Key items and objectives sometimes had different spawn locations, making these games the kindergarten equivalent of Diablo. I still love how these games look. Each series has its own style, and the animation is colorful and fun. There are also minigames and songs, and maybe they fall a bit closer to the entertainment end of the edutainment spectrum, but they're just too good to pass up. Just like Reader Rabbit, some entries of the Junior Adventure series have appeared on the Wii, mobile devices, and even Steam, keeping this franchise relevant and accessible to kids today. Kids and adults, Matt. Kids and adults. There's no age limit on these games. It's impossible to be too old to play them. But there is an age limit. It says right on the box. Look, it says ages 3 through 8. Fine, so I'm a bad boy who doesn't play by the rules. However you want to reason it, Matt, I'm still gonna play him. What do you even learn from this game? I mean, I must have played Oregon Trail 2 a hundred times and I still can't think of one thing that it taught me. Are you kidding? The Oregon Trail was full of great lessons. Uh, don't ford the river, don't drink the water at the first outpost, you can never have enough bear meat. Right, okay. Next time I go out for a jog, I'll be sure to pack enough bear meat. When was the last time you went out for a jog? Okay, okay, hold up. My exercise habits are not on trial here. Oregon Trail is. Now tell me one real lesson that we learned from playing Oregon Trail. Well, it did teach an entire generation of kids that hunting buffalo to the point of extinction was fun. How is this one of the first educational games that comes to my mind? Unless you actually wanted to stop and read about the places you visited, there was no learning going on here. 
I mean, I guess that's what you were supposed to do, but nobody ever did. That's probably why we played so much of it. It was as close to video games as you could get in school. Seriously, Oregon Trail 1 was like the quintessential third-person shooter for me growing up. True, even though the goal was to successfully make it to the west with your wagon party, the hunting game was the main draw to playing Oregon Trail. Everything else just kind of seemed like filler, although it was fun to name your wagon party members after your friends to see who dies first. Like a twisted game of MASH. Oh no, my wagon capsized! What did I lose? What did I lose? What did I lose? The rifle's okay, good. Westward ho! So maybe we didn't learn all that much from it, but the Oregon Trail was a favorite among students and an absolute must-have when discussing top edutainment games. Alright, we're back on track with the education here. Math Blaster was freaking sweet. This is another one of those games that basically tricked kids into doing math homework. Strip away the awesome space hero graphics and you're just filling out a math worksheet. The series was so good at it though. Well, maybe not the first two installments, but those are a little old for me. But new Math Blaster Plus and Math Blaster Episodes 1 and 2 were awesome at the time. Whether you were using your jetpack to escape a cave or trying to collect as much space litter as possible, Math Blaster provided a great mix of arithmetic and space action. It really felt like an actual game, even though each aspect always came back to doing math. You know, Matt, some of the games we've talked about have been a little light on the learning, but I honestly don't think I was ever as excited to do math as I was when I was playing Math Blaster. I was actually excited to do math. I mean, that's quite an accomplishment. Blaster not truly was a hero, which makes it all the more depressing what happened to him in the end. We should have a moment of silence for our fallen hero. What do you mean, fallen hero? Nothing bad ever happened to the Blaster Knot. He solved every issue he ever encountered. With math. Sure, back in the day he was cool, but, well, you should just see what he's been up to since then. Oh my god, what happened to him? He looks like he belongs on the cover of a How to Draw Manga book. It just looks like some desperate attempt to stay hip and cool. But this is not the Blaster Knot we once knew. As I said before, let's take a moment of silence for our fallen friend. Alright, so we're almost at number one, but before we get to that, both of us have a quick honorable mention. Since we combined ideas and compromised to make this list, some things had to be left out. So, very quickly, we're going to describe why our honorable mentions are great edutainment games. Mavis Beacon's got nothing on Typing of the Dead. Sure, it's not math or science, but killing zombies to improve your words per minute is hard to top, and there's even a new one that's just as fun. Surgeon Simulator Eat Your Heart Out, another of those stressful educational games. If you thought stopping meteors was intense, how about shooting rabies inside this kid's brain? And remember, if you fail, he dies. Isn't learning fun? It beat the Humongous Entertainment games, it beat Math Blaster, and it even beat Oregon Trail. But there is no doubt that the Dr. Brain series earned this number one spot. Dr. Brain didn't require knowledge in just one area. It quizzed you in everything. Logical reasoning, art history, different languages. This series had it all. One moment you're using mathematics and logic, and then the next thing you know you're dealing with astronomy or solving a cryptogram. The series even worked in games that were more action-oriented, a la hunting in Oregon Trail. Mini games like Spelunking and Synaptic Cleft offered a nice break from composing caveman rock music and file sorting. Each installment had such a huge variety of minigames, but they all stuck with you. The Island of Dr. Brain is the reason that, to this day, I can still do those Tower of Hanoi puzzles so quickly. Not only did these games make you think, but they also made you laugh. Every installment has a slew of hilarious quotes littered throughout. My favorite was the lost mind of Dr. Brain. Having your lab rat assistant performing as a Swedish construction worker was endlessly entertaining. Like Warcraft, I kept clicking on him to see what he would say next. Let's see if we can get to this one just right. 
It wasn't as simple as just breezing through levels based on what you knew. Dr. Brain forced you to sit there and think until you were furious, or you just lowered the difficulty. But the more frustrated you got, the more exhilarating it was when you successfully finished a puzzle. It might have been a little tempting to give up from time to time, but more often than not, you were compelled to keep trying. Challenge and fun harmoniously come together in the Dr. Brain series, and all of the brain hurt it put us through has now earned it the title of our number one edutainment game. Wow, truly, we are geniuses for coming up with this list. Yes, well, I credit my genius to the years I spent playing humongous entertainment games. Ian, give it a rest. In fact, the more you keep bringing up how much you play that game, the more concerned I am for your mental well-being. So, how about it? Did we miss some of your favorite educational games? Perhaps you're a die-hard Mario is Missing fan. You should let us know by telling us your top edutainment games in the comment section below. And if you're new to my channel, why not click this lovely subscribe button here, so you can get even more great gaming videos sent right to your YouTube inbox. I guess. Also, be sure to check out Matt's channel if you haven't already. After this great list of educational games, it would be nice to follow it up with a brain-bending game theory. Also, you should check out Ian's video on one of the games we talked about here, Oregon Trail 2. I'm sure he has something smart to say about it. Well, I wouldn't hold your breath on that one. Well, that's what you get after more than a decade of playing preschool games. So, Matt, I've got a game theory of my own that I've been working on, and I thought maybe we could collaborate on a video about it. Uh, okay. Yeah, that would be fun. What's the theory? Well, you know how Robin Williams named his daughter after Zelda? I've got a theory that Nintendo Zelda and Zelda Williams are actually the same person. Okay, how do you figure that? Alright, alright, listen to this. Firstly, they're both named Zelda, which is what got me suspicious in the first place. But after some heavy research, I also found out that they're both girls. I mean, you gotta admit, that's pretty sketchy. Yeah, yeah, well, you keep digging, alright? You're definitely onto something, so you just keep looking for clues then, alright? You get them, gumshoe. But it's just a theory. A gift. Nope, don't, don't say that. Not a theory. It's more like happenstance. Loose connection of observations at best. But hey, it's just a loose connection of observations. A game happenstance. <sighs> Thanks for watching.